PepsiCo reporting earnings of two twenty-five a share. That was ten cents above expectations. Revenue of twenty-three point four five billion was just ahead of estimates. Company also raising its guidance uh, for the full year. Joining us now is Hugh Johnston, PepsiCo uh, vice chairman and CFO. Uh, Hugh, uh, welcome. It, it's good to see you uh, as always. I'm trying to figure out the 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 raise and, and the better than expected numbers, and it, it looks like. You focus on at least the CEO in, in trying to explain this and the and the the raise and guidance. Just talks about just running the business better. I don't really see where necessarily revenues are up because of gains in market share or innovation. He he talks about things like uh, we've made investments in manufacturing capacity, go to market systems, supply chain. Uh, these all seem like ways of running the business better in terms of costs. Is that why you're outperforming? I, I think that's one of the reasons. And good morning, Joe. Good to be with you guys again as well. I, I do think that as a company, we are executing better and better as we reinvest back in the business and all the things that you mentioned. But I, I wouldn't dismiss the role of innovation in all of this as well. Right? I mean, we, we've got great new products across the snack portfolio, um, things like, uh, you know, the the things we've got going on in, in Quaker and uh, in Funyuns and in Doritos. So there, there's a lot of good innovation going on there. This is typically a lighter portion of the year for innovation for us. Typically, our innovation comes earlier in the year. So maybe that, that's the emphasis that, that you're picking up a little bit. Uh, and then obviously in the beverage portfolio with the relaunch of, uh, of the Pepsi logo uh, on the 125th anniversary of Pepsi, uh, I've been through a few of these over the course of my career, and typically that's driven great results for us as well. So I think it's a good balance of, of top-line driving things with the consumer and then running the business better is what's leading to the great results. And that's the cycle we're in right now is just stacking quarter on quarter. You can't, uh, you can't figure out why stocks go up or down, obviously. What, what the, the last six months, um, not great. What, what do you think that's a reflection of? Is it... Uh, Things out of beyond yeah, your control, I, dollar strength. What is it? I more than anything, I, I think it's interest rates, uh, and mm. I think to some degree it's dollar strength. But more, I'd more lean more into interest rates as the driver. You know, we like most food companies, we're a pretty good dividend payer. You know, the, the yield tends to run in the two and a half to three percent range, which back when the ten year was was substantially lower was was a great alternate place to park your money. Now that the the ten year is up pushing you know in, into the fours and almost five, uh, I think there's more alternative investments that that bear that return. That said, obviously you don't get the growth with those that that you get with us. So I just think there's a bit of rebalancing going on in that regard, um, and that that's obviously an interpretation. I'm sure lots of market makers would have lots of points of view on that. So beverages or or those great salty snacks. What what it, what was more material to to. Uh, the better than expected uh, results. And then, then I want to talk about uh, input costs and inflation and everything else. But what do you, was it the sure. reintroduction of, pep, of Pepsi? Is that what you said? Or, or are you getting... See, those, well, vegetable, those vegetable things you send me, that ain't happening for me, dude. That's just... Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, there's some salt and stuff. You try those, Sorkin? You try any of the vegetable uh, thing? My wife liked them. I was like... I don't, I don't know. I need corn chips, uh, you. I know, Joe. You know, I, I know you're a protein guy, so we, we have to give you what you need. Muscle milk. Drink, drink muscle milk in the morning. It's a great breakfast. <laughs> so, no, I, I actually, in terms of the results, it was equally beverages and snacks. Uh, was, beverages okay. were up globally 8% and foods were up 9%. So it really is good broad-based strength right now as, you know, the, the investments that we're making in advertising and marketing are really benefiting all the brands across the portfolio. The uh, yeah okay let's talk inflation and what you're seeing and then um, I would think if people were taking a Zempic you could just you could eat more you could eat because it no it makes you not like, want you, you know so you don't want you don't want to eat snacks is that happening Hugh do you know is that really going to happen CEO you of Walmart I know the, are you worried US about that CEO of Walmart said. Yeah, I would say this. We're studying it closely, uh, but we don't see it at all in our numbers right now. I mean, okay. zero at this point. So, look, I, I think there's there's sort of a lot of challenges to adoption there, right? Number one is it, it's an injectable drug. Number yeah. two is the, the costs are going to be high, so who's going to pay for it? You should but, have bought a cannabis company and start pushing that. Then, then. But, Hugh, don't, <laughs> don't, don't you think long-term that once this is in pill form— 
that it could actually be meaningful in terms of changing the dynamic. And by the way, in a good way, Hugh. Right? In a good way. I mean, Absolutely. maybe ba bad for yeah. you or bad for the company in certain ways and maybe bad for, for folks who make, make food, but maybe good for the health of folks, no? Well, to, yeah, to tell you the truth, Andrew, I think anything that, that's good for human health is actually good for the company in the long run as well, right? That, that's something that's a positive for, for all of us, both as individuals and, and as, a, as a company. I think to the degree that this gets adopted, it will likely get adopted pretty slowly over time. And that'll give us time to evolve our portfolio. People are going to want to continue to snack in some form or another. If they want more protein, if they want more carbohydrates, this is stuff that we know how to do very, very well. And my expectation is, just like we did with zero sugar, we'll be able to adopt to this as, as time goes on. But I do think it's going to be slow adoption, not rapid adoption. Hey, Hugh, I remember talking to Indra Nooyi way back when, and, and she mentioned that when gasoline prices, when prices go up at the pump, you can often see um, that kind of put the pressure on the PepsiCo consumer, like people who used to go and fill up at the pump and walk inside and pick up a Pepsi and a Frito-Lays now are using that money to fill their tanks and they just go without the stuff they were picking up as snacks. Have you guys seen that as, as gas prices have picked up recently? You know, it's interesting, Becky. You, you have a terrific memory on that because we have, we have correlated that consistently over time. Right now, we're not seeing it. The, the consumer is still pretty healthy from what we can tell. Maybe a little bit of strain in terms of uh, shifting into, into more discount channels that they buy in. But to, to give you a little bit of data on that front, the beverage business was up 5% in convenience stores for the quarter, and the free-to-lay business was up 8%. And overall, our what we call food service, so restaurants and the like, was up double digits for the quarter. So we're, we're not seeing the impact of high, higher oil prices on our convenience business or our away-from-home business.